Welcome back to the bench everyone. Today is the second video in my audio amplifier output topology series of videos. Like I said, I would do one periodically, maybe once a month or whenever I can get around to it. But today we're going to talk about the single driven element class A output stage. As opposed to like a push-pull type stage, this has a single driven transistor. So what I have here is a simplified schematic of the single driven element class A amplifier stage. It has a current source here and the voltage source which is a driven voltage source. They might use a diamond shape for that but you get the idea here. And this will vary the voltage while the current source attempts to keep the current the same at all times during operation of the circuit. So what are the attributes of a current source or in this case a constant current source? Well like I said it wants to keep the current kept to a preset value regardless of the load on it. So if I short circuit this point to ground and let's say I have this set to one amp and I short circuit this to ground it will still pass one amp. In theory, if I put a 1 mega ohm resistor on the output of the current source at 1 amp, it would try to set the voltage at 1 million volts. Now, of course, it can't do that because the supply voltage, and even if you did have a very high supply voltage, then your components would be the limiting factor. So what normally happens here if you exceed the dropout voltage of the constant current source, which might be around a volt in this case, it will just let the current fall. Now we can think of this element as a voltage source. And that voltage source would vary with our audio signal. So at our output node here in the middle, in between these two devices, we take off the signal for the speaker. And at this node, it would vary with the audio signal. So we have an audio signal going up and down here. And this is trying to keep the current the same. So what happens is when the voltage at this node goes high, it wants to charge this capacitor up. So current's going to pass through this and drive our speaker with a positive voltage. And when the voltage swings low at this point, this capacitor is going to discharge back in to this point here and the reverse current will flow so we'll have AC at our speaker. Well some people might argue isn't this just a, adjusting the voltage to keep the current the same and this current to keep the voltage the same or can this also be a current source? Well it's an argument in semantics. It just helps us describe the circuit better the way I have it described here. So hopefully it makes sense. Okay, first off we need to design a current source for our circuit. Well the first order of business is determining what the current should be for a constant current source. Well one way to look at it is you can say well in my circuit here we're going to use 12 volts and we'll design for an 8 ohm load. We might think of taking your supply voltage divided by 8 ohms, but you have to remember we're at half the supply voltage roughly, so it would be better to use 6 volts. And in real life we wouldn't even get that rail to rail swing, so... But you know, that's a good starting point. 6 volts divided by 8 ohms and 750 milliamps. So in practical use, that current still might be too much because you have to think of the power you're going to use. A Class A amplifier is going to dissipate a lot of power. You know, this thing is only going to be around 20% efficient under optimal conditions. So 12 volts drawing 3 quarters of an amp, you know, that's 9 watts. So you'll have to make sure you have plenty of heat sinking because that's a continuous 9 watts. You know whether a signal's flowing or not, whether the thing's just sitting there idle, it's going to consume 9 watts. You know it's a class A amplifier. In our case we're going to go 
somewhat lower. We'll experiment with different currents to see how it affects our output. So that I can use smaller heat sinks, I'll probably design for like under half an amp or so. And like I say, we might play around with it to see how different currents affect our output. And here is the circuit I will use for the constant current source. We have the output transistor here and the control transistor. So how the circuit works is, well, first let's pretend that the control transistor is not part of the circuit, so I'll cover it up. And these, of course, are P and P, so it's kind of backward thinking of NPN circuit. It's kind of flipped over because we want our current source at the top or the supply sourcing current to the rest of the circuit. So what happens here is current flows down into the transistor through the base emitter junction and out the biasing resistor. Because we have current flowing through the base emitter junction it's going to turn this transistor on and allow it to conduct emitter to collector and down to the load resistance. Now, the circuit as it stands doesn't have much of a way of limiting or controlling the current. Why this, this resistor here will limit the base current, which, depending on the gain of this transistor, will limit collector current, but it's not going to keep it constant. So what we do is we add in a controlling transistor. This is our sense resistor. When the voltage drop reaches around 0.65 volts, 650 millivolts, which is around the base emitter threshold voltage, current will start to flow in this transistor. And when that happens, it's going to shunt current away from the base of the output transistor here, and it will start controlling the current. This resistor is optional. It's just to protect the small signal transistor. Let's say this transistor failed. What would happen is heavy current would flow through this junction back this way if there was no resistor here and through the circuit where the heavier current flows. And it could blow this transistor out as well. So how do we set the current in the circuit? Well, we need to know a current and I'm going to aim for 500 milliamps. So we know that amount of current is going to flow through this sense resistor here. We also know the voltage drop, and that's going to be the base emitter junction voltage of, we'll say it's like 650 millivolts. So we have those values we can punch in the calculator, 0.65 and divide that by 0.5, giving us 1.3 ohms. Well, I don't have a 1.3 ohm resistor. If I used a 1 ohm, we'd have too much current. If we used a 2 ohm to start out with, I might try a 1 ohm later, but we'll, we'll try a, a 2 ohm resistor, and that will give us... Um, well, we can figure it out, can't we? Uh, let's see, 0 0.65 divided by 2 ohms, 325 milliamps. So, you know, we're just using Ohm's law here. Okay, so what about the value of these resistors? Well, this one's not critical. I just selected a value that would keep current low. You don't want to go too high where it would cause a vo another voltage drop here that would affect our circuit. And the value of this resistance here has to pa be able to pass enough base current here to keep our power transistor turned on. And these transistors I'm using have a gain of at least 80. So, you know, we're running 12 volts. There'll be some voltage drops here. Uh, collector emitter junction drop. So we have plenty of current going through a 1K resistor to turn this transistor on to our preset value. Okay, now let's build out the circuit and test it. 
Okay, I build out the constant current source circuit, and I have a 5 watt, 12 volt bulb connected to it. And we're all set up, and here is our constant current output. It's going to be the same as what it's drawing. So I chose a bulb that would draw enough current without keeping this thing from going all the way to the rail voltage. At that point it would hit the dropout and the current would fall. So let me try another thing. So if I short circuit ground to the collector and remove the load, which in this case it's the light bulb, let's see how the current is affected. So I'll see I short that out. Look at that. It's on it's shorted. It's on. It's, come on, make contact. Shorted. Doesn't even change. Perfect. And this 12 volt bulb is running about 10 volts, which is probably about the maximum output before this thing hits dropout. Maybe a little bit higher, maybe 11 volts. I'd have to measure it. That tells me this circuit is going to be pretty linear across our output swing with our 8 ohm load. Now watch what happens. I'm going to pull this transistor out, the control transistor, and our bulb did get brighter. Our current went up. Now watch what happens when I short circuit. And you can see the current goes up. I have the current limit set to 1 amp on this thing. And it went up to 1 amp. Because I didn't want to damage anything. Well, at this point in time, I'll put the wraps on this video and call it part 1. Then I'll come back and build the driven stage and do some actual tests and listening and measurement and all that good stuff. I will adjust the current source and the rest of the circuit for higher current because at the original design of uh, about a third of an amp, 330 milliamps, don't think it's going to put out a lot of power. So I'll experiment with doubling that and we'll make a comparison. And if time permits, I'll look at using an inductor in the stage or I'll put that in a part three video. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.